Talk Commercial Construction Coffee Talk fans. Thanks for chiming in. My name's David Corson. I'm your host. I'm also the publisher and editor of Commercial Construction Renovation Magazine. This is what it used to look like. I've got Mr. Dave O'Brien here uh, from Primex Properties on the cover. What is this? Uh, July, August 2019. Oh, it's always nice to hold the magazine. This one was 180 pages. Lots of stuff going on in here. Uh, but thanks, Dave, for being on the cover. You know, hope all is well up there in Charlotte. Um, anyway, uh, we went we went digital August of 2021. That was our last issue we published and uh, haven't looked back since. Uh, it's been uh, uh, a wild three years of, a, of the roller coaster and uh, we're all coming out of it. It's uh, coming up on Fourth of July weekend, uh, second half of 2023, Q3 and Q4. Uh, a lot of sports are done. It's just the, you know, the boys of summer out on the diamond. Uh, and, um, oh, you got the PLL. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's the Professional Lacrosse League. There was actually two lacrosse leagues, the Professional Lacrosse League and Major League Lacrosse. And they merged. And now they have, they don't, each team doesn't have a city. They actually go around the cities and they play uh, two days, Friday and a Saturday. And uh, but all of the uh, college and professional lacrosse players, they all play in there. And um, uh, I think they've added some cities to their tour. But now I think this year they've changed it where each city will have kind of their home team so they can root for the players. But it's a very cool way that the uh, PLL does it. And they've got the TV contract. And, and, and as a lacrosse guy, because my sticks are behind me, as you know, uh, the world championship is going on. It's every uh, four years and it's actually in San Diego. And I was just watching the other night, uh, Team USA in the opening round, they beat uh, Team Canada 7-5, which is their arch rival. They're in the, you know, the upper division. There's about five teams that are in there. So it'll be actually probably Canada and the U.S. in the finals. But if you really want to see some good lacrosse, there's a, a bunch of teams. You know, it's probably on ESPN or ESPN2, whenever they're, they're carrying it. But if you want to see some really good lacrosse, I mean, you could see Team Israel, Ireland, uh, you know, some, some, some of these, you know, there's teams from all over the world that play in this thing and it's, and it's all different levels. And uh, my, my old guys team, we used to go out there. I think the last time that we did that, I was uh, on the over 45 team or maybe it was the over 50, but anyway, it was in Denver and, uh, and, and uh, one of my, one of my team members team, they won the, uh, the over 45 division, which is, which is huge. Cause like I said, there's teams from all over the world that come to this thing. So it's a huge, huge gig. So if you get a chance, check it out on the tube. Um, anyway, Another beautiful day here in Atlanta. Can't complain. Sunny. It's going to be 97 this weekend, but the humidity is not too bad. So we will take it because I know it's coming. And the lake is full. It's on just below 1070, which is at full pool. And, uh, you know, I'm getting ready. Uh, you know, weekend, cutting the grass, uh, go out in the boat, you know, enjoy myself, uh, fly my flag, be patriotic. And, uh, you know, without July 4, 1776, you know, where will we be today? That's all I got to say. And thank you for all of you guys out there that, you know, we're patriots and way back when to give us this great country that we can enjoy it. So today have a gentleman out in uh, the great state of Arizona in the Valley of the Sun in Phoenix. His name is Mr. Dave Fenton. He's the managing director for ECM Technologies. And uh, they're basically, uh, you know, they're in that HVAC sector. They deal with refrigerant, uh, but they actually... Their product actually helps units and just HVAC in general, you know, with refrigeration. It just makes them run more smoothly, you know. And, you know, if you're a multi-unit operator, you know that, listen, HVAC energy, it's cooling, it's heating, it's it, it's a necessity. And you want to make sure your equipment runs as smooth as possible. So, Dave, say hello to our listeners out there in Commercial Construction Coffee Talk land out from the West. Hey, nice meeting everybody. You know, I just want to come back and, and make a quick comment. You know, you were talking about the weather in, in Atlanta and it made me go and look at, at the calendar here for the next 10 days. And we're going to be up to a bombing 116 degrees out here on Sunday. And, um, you know, you, you hit on a really interesting point. It's one of the fastest growing areas, right, in, in the United States and has been for 20 years. But if air conditioning wasn't around, Phoenix would never be the size of, of where it's at. Phoenix is what it is today from a from a growth standpoint because of air conditioning. So, anyway, oh, yeah. thank you, for, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here, and you know, look forward to speaking with you. Well, well, you know, you know, 
it's uh it, it's one of those things it's summertime if you're an hvac you know you know units are breaking down you're busy as heck uh, and you know it's normally a refrigerant or a leak or something uh you know you got to maintain your, your your units so they can last you know hopefully 20 or 25 years if you get that much out of them if you're lucky but uh uh without hvac uh you know where would you be you know it's just like uh you know our, our government shuts down in august for those of you who don't know, like they all in August, the government shuts down and all the all Congress goes back to, to where they where they're from. And the whole reason was way back in the day, it got so hot in Washington, D.C., you mm -hmm. know, because it was built on a swamp. All right. That they said it was so hot. Just go home. All right. So they made it now kind of like, oh, this is their time to go back and talk to your, you know, to the uh, to the electoral vote and, and you know, to who you're going to represent. But now with HVAC. They actually could go back and get stuff done, but still, because there's HVAC in DC, but now they still want that ba little vacation to go back and hang out, you know, exactly. uh, just a little history lesson. That's why they went, because it was so hot one summer in August. They just said, oh man, it's freaking hot. Go home, go back to the farm, go wherever you got to go, you know? So it, well, uh, it's, it's, look, I'm, I'm, we're, we're, we're fortunate, um, uh, we love what our technology is revolutionizing in the in the HVAC uh, service sector and period really in in the HVAC industry overall. And uh, you know, as I mentioned, I think you know to to you prior, you know, I've been living out here now three years full time and love it. But you know, also see the opportunity that you know our technology is going to do for an area of the country where. You know, HVAC use is is used a tremendous amount of time. So um, seeing our technology take place, take foothold out here, uh, catch on. Uh, you know, we're really excited about what the the coming years are going to bring nationally as our technology gets rolled out. So excited to be here. And well, uh, we well, we're excited to have you. Welcome to to another episode. Um, here's how it's going to work. Uh, we'll do it in three three phases. Uh, you'll tell your story, where you grew up, brothers, sisters, playing sports, kids, all that good stuff, and how you ended up where you are today. Then we'll talk about the last three, year, three years of our roller coaster that we've all been on and uh, any lessons learned, any new products that, you know, uh, uh, that might be available that you're, you know, coming down the pipeline. And then you'll leave one positive thought or phrase with uh, our listeners out there on Commercial Construction Coffee Talk and contact info, and then we'll close it out. So with that said... The floor is yours. Dave, tell us your story. My story is uh, is really not that complicated. Uh, I was born and raised in, in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, lived in Memphis up until, um, you know, my um, mid-20s. And then ended up moving up to into the New York area because of real estate opportunity. And spent uh, the majority of, of my life so far was was in that area doing um, high-end residential construction. Um, I had one of the, the biggest uh, custom home building residential uh, construction businesses just north of New York City. And it was actually because of being in that industry that led me to, to where I'm at today with um, being involved in, in the technology that, that we brought to market. So, um, you know, had the experience of, of, of being on, on both sides of, of, of the United States um, over my career have, have been fortunate to, to have been mentored by, by some wonderful people that um, has put me, you know, at, at 55 years of age, you know, where I'm at today, you know, in the business sector. So that's kind of my, my overall, you know, story. Um, Hey, it's hey, listen. Lot, lots of contractors have gone, and you know, the, you know, both sides of the fence. And uh, you know, my family, we've been in construction since 1888. So I grew up with construction. Here, I'm, you know, I'm a publisher. But you know what? I build this magazine every month. I'm still a constructor. So you know, it, it's uh, it's uh, it, everything you've done in your life. I don't care what it is. Maybe it was your first job. Maybe it was something that you learned from your science teacher in school or in shop class or what have you. All of that stuff all, all comes full circle at one point or another. You can take something and apply it to your business. Memphis, we did our retreat there, I think, in 2019. And um, uh, we stayed at uh, the Hugh Hotel, uh, which is a couple streets from Beale Street. 
anyway, I hadn't been, you know, uh, I hadn't been, I, I'd been to uh, Graceland way back when, when it was just one building. Now they've built uh, just, you know, the museum. It's got like four or five buildings on it. They've got the amphitheater. I mean, it's just amazing what Memphis has. And it's a great town. You got Beale Street where, you know, we went to BB King's uh, for dinner and had listened to the oh, Friday Night Band. The guy across the street, I forget what that one was called. Uh, and then we went to the uh, Sun Sun uh, Sun Studios, yeah, and uh, where Elvis and all those guys uh, recorded. Uh, went to the uh, uh, the memorial for uh, uh, Martin Luther King, and uh, you know, it, Memphis is a very cool town. Great ribs, great food, southern. Oh, listen, the bar bar barbecue is the best. That's you know, that's the one thing I miss. Yeah, we did we did rendezvous uh, one day after yep. we did the tour, and. Uh, well, uh, you know, yeah. look, next, look, I'll send you to the right barbecue places, right? The one, the one places in Memphis to go for barbecue, you're you're not going to hear about them. Um, oh, but yeah. The, the, but, but the good news is, you know, you bring that up. It makes me one of the things I love going back. I still go to Memphis because my daughter lives there and, and now I have a grandson that's there. So every time I go back, you know, it's like planning out, okay, we're going to go to Payne's barbecue and then, we're, you know, we're going to go over here. We're going to hit the rendezvous and then we'll hit Corky's and then, so... Oh, yeah. Too, man. yeah no listen the foot the, the food was great we had great weather there and we, we had a really nice crowd but uh uh i used to do all my 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 my, my executive retreats in, in the fall and we were always doing them on the beach you know or someplace nice and on the water but every year you were you were playing with the hurricanes and then uh, i think when uh, one hit daytona or the east coast i told my wife i go look i can't i can't roll the dice anymore i'm gonna get i gotta go inland so we went and did niagara falls we did lexington we did the uh, you know churchill downs and we did all these interior you know cities and they're so nice you know, I mean, you know, that people have never been there. Uh, they, you know, it it was just a cool place. I liked Memphis. You know, it just. Uh, well, we're, yeah, we're going to end up being back there now quite a bit because, um, you know, because of our the the the, the growth of how we're, we're rolling our technology out, Memphis being in the Sun Belt. Yeah, so getting back to Memphis and and having the opportunity to to be back where my roots were established, and then also to be around my daughter and grandson because the business is going to be wonderful. So looking yeah. forward to it. You'll have to come, you'll have to come to Memphis when I'm there and I'll take you around some great work. Yeah, no, and I actually have some really good clients in Memphis. So, uh, uh, yeah, you know, I probably would fly up there. Oh, I could drive it. You know, it's not that far. Nashville's, uh, three hours away and then a couple more hours you're in Memphis. So I, I probably would drive it, but, uh, uh, you know, it's, you know, like I said, anything that, it, that's five hours or less, I drive it because by the time I get down to Atlanta, Hartsfield, Go through security, drop my oh, car. Oh yeah, a absolutely. I'm already absolutely. there. The only the only one that I won't do is Orlando, even though it's only an hour flight. It, it's about a seven hour ride down there, man. It is brutal, man. But although Don Garlitz has his museum off I seventy five, so if you've never been to that and you do that ride, stop off and take five minutes and go check it out. It's a very cool place. But other than that, it's flat, and I'd rather get there in an hour and be done with it. But anything, you know, Birmingham. Chattanooga, Savannah, Charlotte. I can go down. All the, we're driving it, you know, Knoxville, whatever. It, uh, anything five hours, we're driving it. It's just so much easier. So, well, let's talk about uh, March of 2020. So, the, you know, the country's just cruising right along and then bam, everything, uh, you know, just, you know, comes to a halt and everybody's trying to figure out, you know, what they're going to do. Three years later, here we are. And, uh, you know, the country's kind of opened up. There's still some lingering effects of, uh, you know, the, you know, that movie or roller coaster, whatever you want to call it, that we're all on. Talk about how your firm kind of weathered that storm over the last couple of years. And, you know, that our listeners would, you know, maybe knowledge nuggets that you guys implemented and, and talk about, you know, how your business and any new products that, you know, you might have coming up, you know, in the pipeline. Well, I mean, look, like everybody, when, when he, everybody like was throwing their hands up going, what do we do, right? It's like never been in a situation like this, literally, right? Everything shut down. Um, the normal course of how everybody in this country conducted their day-to-day -day lives, you know, how they operated in business uh, changed. And what, what we have seen, just like it, I, I'm sure everybody else is, and, and, and I've choosed my words here, but it, it, it has revolutionized many aspects of business going forward. And I think what you're seeing today is, you know, people call it the fallout 
Um, I think it's the residual ongoing uh, change has, has caused globally, not just here in the United States, but globally how how all businesses today are operating. So I think the the biggest aspect for us is is seeing the efficiencies and the economies of scale with being able to run the business. And in terms of driving top line revenue, the ability for us to to get there faster is uh, tremendously been shortened versus um, how business was done prior to. uh, to You'd be amazed at how many people I've had conversations with over the last couple of years, you know, whether it's been on the phone or on, on one of these episodes, they've all said, Hey, uh, you know, we, we, we figured how to get our, you know, employees kept them involved, whether it was hybrid, whatever, working out of their house, but they've had some of the best years. They learned a lot about their business, about themselves, about their personal life, and that they've been very productive. They, they probably could have been more productive if there was more labor out there, if there weren't, you know, product shortages, you know, those, those hindrances that are just, you know, ailing us, you know, as a lingering effect. But, uh, it really, most of the people over the last couple of years, they've just, you know, they've just have had great you know, years. I very rarely do I hear someone that's, that, that says that, Hey, you know, we're digging and, and it's construction. So with us, you can't build a hospital in a month, you know, or whatever. I mean, construction around here in Georgia, it just kind of moved right along and you put the protocols in place. And, uh, I don't think anybody in the construction that, you know, if you were in construction, uh, when the roller coaster started, you know, you put your mask on, you got in the plane and you went to work. I mean, that's just a, you know, pure bootstrap uh, mentality. And, uh, you know, you let the chips fall where they may. So construction wise, even facilities, you know, we're, we're in that design, build, maintain sector. So with us, it really didn't matter. It didn't really stop. It was just kind of figuring out, okay, this is the way we have to do it for now until things are figured out. We know what's going on. And, um, uh, well, that, that aspect, David, you're right. You know, um, when it comes to right construction, the physical aspect of building, um, you take even, you know, our technology, right? We we have to go out. We have to touch the AC units. We have to, you know, install, um, you know, thermoclear and HVAC equipment. So the actual physical aspect of, of maintenance work and construction, you're right, that's still moving. And there's not much change in that. Like, there's no difference in how you're going to service a, a an HV, piece of H, HVAC equipment pre-COVID or post-COVID. What it's done is um, it's given the, the the operational efficiency, right, in, in really in the SG&A part of a business where your office, your admin, um, the people that are in that area, the efficiencies of how you use your employees. Um, also, for us, you know, it gave us a whole new aspect. We, we, we changed our company culture because of COVID. Um, and it really made us take into account and appreciate, you know, our employees' time um, and looking at the productivity that that we get from everybody that uh, that works in the business. So uh, I see it as only a positive. Um, things are going to continue to change. Uh, the technologies that have enabled us to operate. Uh, such as what we're doing right now, right? We're Mm -hmm. on a video conference. Um, David, prior to this, I mean, you and I are both the same age. I mean, what were we doing? We were getting (laughs) cars, right? We were driving. We were on airplanes, right? You know, talk about uh, being in the Delta lounges, living in them, right? I'm in a Delta lounge on Monday. I'm in a Delta lounge on Wednesday. And then I'm in the one on Friday traveling back home to the family, right? Um, Those days are over. What mm-hmm. what's going on now is, and so is even speaking on the cell phone. I, I spend more time now on video conferences than I do with anything. So being able to use video conferencing, right? Because it gives you that human touch. Like you and I can, we're looking at each other. We're getting a feel. There's body language. That's the component part that um, I think that, that COVID has forever changed. And you know, look, even, even when I get on with my, like my dad, you know, my dad's 80 years old, we, we COVID now we, we do weekly, you know, video conferences, right. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's how we see each other and there's no more phones. So again, a lot of these economies of scale, 
of newer technologies is going to give businesses the flexibility to operate more efficiently and also drive top line revenue faster. Tell, tell our audience out there, Commercial Construction Coffee Talk, you know, kind of in, in a nutshell of what you what your product actually does. Because, you know, it, you know, it's not an add on. It's a necessity. And, it, you know, it's an efficiency thing. Just give them a kind of a ballpark of what you guys actually do. You know, with yeah, I'll keep, uh, I'll keep it up at a high level. We're not going to get into the weeds. Yeah. On you can get in the weeds in this stuff. We don't want to no, go. No, we're just no, gonna we, we don't I, I know what it is, but let them. Yeah. Know. Listen, every, you know, look, I'll encourage everybody to go over, you know, to our website and, you know, get as much information about, you know, ECM technologies and thermal clear. But what I tell everybody, what, what our technology is, we are the Lipitor to HVAC systems, right? We're the statin drug except the, the difference is ours is a one-time treatment where if you're on Lipitor, you're taking that every morning or evening, right? That's the same thing. What we're doing is we're getting rid of the oil fouling, also known as thermal degradation, that's in pretty much almost every HVAC piece of equipment that's in operation today. And, and what that is, is, you know, oil fouling, is caused by the oils that escape from the compressors that get into the refrigerant line. They stick to the to the to the metal of the heat exchanger. Our technology goes in and it removes that oil layer, uh, putting it back in circulation because you're never stopping the oil that that's coming out of a compressor. The key is is you don't want it sticking on the metal where it becomes a barrier to, to uh, efficient heat transfer. And so that our technology is doing three things as we demonstrated. Um, over four plus years of, of extensive uh, pilot programs with major organizations around the United States is we're going to uh, reduce the electricity consumption of that unit because it's gonna operate more efficiently anywhere between 10 and 15%. And we're significantly reducing repair and maintenance cost um, on equipment that was treated. And to give you a case in point is, um, you know, we treated um, 118 units at uh, Arizona State University at their facilities building was 17 year old equipment. And four years later, go back and do an inventory and over 95% of that equipment is still in operation. And of that 95% equipment that's still in operation, not one single unit has had a service repair uh, call for a replacement of any component part on the refrigerant side. So that includes compressors, more importantly than anything, because that's your, your biggest component mm -hmm. um, on, on, on the refrigerant side. So that's what our technology does. Um, we are hitting the commercial market first um, and then soon to follow suit behind that. Um, sometime in, in 2024, we're going to have it available to the uh, residential sector. Hey, listen, the units are basically the same. They're doing the same thing on the commercial or residential side. God yeah. knows. And God knows just how many homes that are in the United States. It's just, uh, you know, no. it, it's, it's like, you know, when you look at it, right. You know, David, um, you take an average home, average home, 50% of their electricity use or more is going to be for running their HVAC equipment in a commercial office building it could range anywhere from 40 to 60%. So, you know, you're right on, on what you made the statement. It's like, I tell everybody, you know, that that air conditioning unit you have beside your house or, you know, that air conditioning unit that's on top of your roof, it doesn't have a brain in it. It doesn't know whether it's cooling, you know, the 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 auto parts store or whether it's, you know, cooling the, you know, the bank branch. Yeah. Um, and that's where, you know, I, a lot of the earlier pushback we would get, um, you know, before the, you know, our or product, you know, really taking off was, well, you know, my, my HVAC equipment operates differently. You don't understand, you know, we operate it diff differently. No, a five ton unit that's in the on position and it's the same model as this other unit down the block that's on the on position, it's running the same way. Now, one may be cycling more than the other, but they're running the same. So, yeah. you know, to your point. Yeah. yeah. You know, with, with your with your product line and stuff, do you have any uh, other additional products as, you know, your your product's been rolled out into the market and, and people have, you know, accept it and, you know, apply it, you know, to their equipment, you know, or their fleet of AC units or whichever way you want to look at it. Do you have anything else that you see coming down the pipeline for yourself or just in the HVAC industry in general? 
Well, I mean, one of the things that's really been overlooked in HVAC industry has been, um, you know, dealing with thermal degradation, oil fouling. Our technology is is not something new. This space that we're in, it goes back 40 years where um, other companies were trying to figure out how to solve for this. Um, what we're fortunate is we've got some really brilliant uh, engineers uh, and, 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 and inventors that are part of our organization that have decades of successful experience um, in this sector. And, you know, we were able to uh, show and demonstrate the long-term benefit of, of, of our intellectual property that's in, um, in Thermoclear. So we focused on that. Um, we're looking at, uh, at uh, some other things right now that um, are not necessarily inside the, the uh, heat exchanger loop where, where Thermoclear benefits, but uh, on the outside of, of condensers and evaporators. Um, the demand for Thermoclear and what we're seeing from the market right now is, is really our driving force. And then we're constantly taking, you know, um, you know, our formulation and we're working on advancements to, you know, see what would be the next generation. How can we even more improve, you know, the efficiencies uh, of our, of our intellectual property. So we, we put a tremendous amount of investment, you know, uh, into continued research. Did, did you guys, uh, were you guys exhibiting or did you attend the uh, AHR show here in Atlanta in January? No, but we will be there uh, this year. What, we, what we're excited about is, um, and, and again, it's going to be released. I can't, uh, you know, uh, disclose the information yeah. right this minute, but we've got a major, major um, uh, commercial HVAC service company that we're going to be opening Florida up with uh, very, very soon. And, um, you know, given... Um, you know, to, to, to the conference that's done annually this coming up year, we're going to have a, be a major, um, we're going to be involved with them in a major way. We're not yeah, only going yeah. to booth, but, but we're, we're also, I'm sure going to end up having a speaking engagement there because they've already been in touch with us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had, I had another HVAC guy on earlier and, uh, I asked him the same thing as, oh yeah. And, uh, so li listen, AHR, it's all everything HVAC AC, if you want to well, know. I mean, like, like to give you an example, you know, you know, where if you took the you know the industry publication that's out there for HVAC, right? right. Which um, you know we're we're in you know now we're we're spending a lot of marketing uh, efforts in in the uh, in the various specific uh, media trade publications for HVAC. Um, where I think I uh, may have mentioned to you you know prior to 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 this, you know we're we're building out our product support network which is how Thermoclear is going to come to the market. And what that's going to consist of is, is licensed HVAC service companies in the United States. That's, that's who will be bringing and is bringing uh, Thermoclear to, to the market right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 we, I sold my house back in October of 21. So that house was uh, almost 20 years old, maybe 17, but those units, you know, we had three of them it was a three story gig, you know, Atlanta, everybody's got a basement. So uh, but, uh, you know, we, we had fun and my kid had graduated and, you know, he's, he's, a, he's, a he's on the flight line in Boeing in Charleston. So he's a, you know, right. he's, a, he's an AMP guy. Anyway, um, you know, we were empty nesters. What do we need this freaking trophy house for? You know? And I told him, I'm like, look, those AC units are going to go, you know, we've reported, you know, a couple of the condensers over the years and this, and that's just like your roof. It's only going to last so long. And uh, it's time for us to get out and let someone else, you know, have those headaches down, not headaches, but the replacement, you know, to deal with. And uh, but like anything else, uh, you know, you can have an old car if you maintain it and work on it and keep it, you know, it'll it'll last forever. Not forever, but I mean, hey, long, hey, much look, longer than you, it normally would. Hey, look, if we put Thermoclear in those AC units before you sold the house, you know, you're just, you're going to pass them a tremendous benefit to, to the new homeowner because, Right. New homeowner coming in. The worst thing that the homeowner is going to want is a year from now, your systems go down and all of a sudden they're dropping a lot of money, replacing it less than a year. Mm -hmm. So by extending the equipment life, which we've shown, it's it's a huge benefit on that front. We're, we know that the, the residential sector is really going to take off with this because the the value component to a homeowner 
in terms of looking at their equipment and what is some of their biggest replacement component parts of owning a house, it's HVAC. So, you know. Yeah, we, we, have, we have a piece of land up on Lake Lanier and uh, I've had it now, but we just got our, our plans done and I'm working in with Forsyth County to get my uh, my clearing permit and all the other stuff that I get to get done, you know, hands out, pay me. So uh, the uh, uh, so when I walked AHR, I looked for all the stuff that I needed, you know, the hot water boiler. I want to do tankless. Uh, we looked at units. I looked at all this different stuff that, of things that I'm going to need. You know, my my wife's an interior contractor uh, and um, we're going to build a house ourselves. And uh, so I was looking for all sorts of stuff at that show, the things that I'm going to need, you know, to, to well, listen. To you know what we're going to do for you, right? When you get that house up and going, you get the air conditioning system. We're going to come out and we're going to treat your your new HVAC equipment because that'll prevent thermal degradation from happening. And so a lot you got of our, a deal. All right. We're no, we're going to come do that for you. That's going to be our pleasure. All right. Hey, we're gonna, we got the boat on the lake. We'll go, we'll, right. we'll, we'll do the application and we'll go for a spin and we'll go over to the twisted door for some grub. On That's the, a deal. Water. No, it's, it's a deal. Listen, we have it recorded. Your audience is hearing this. So we're going to give you the thermoclear and then we're, you and I are going out on the boat and then we're going to go get some grub. There you go. You got a deal, man. I'm ready. So, um, listen, if, um, if someone wanted to do, I'll reach out to you and talk, uh, thermoclear or, you know, Hey, I have this issue with my thing Would would your products help me? Or, you know, how would someone reach out to you? Well, first off, they can follow us on, on social media. We're on, uh, um, face, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, we're also on LinkedIn, but if you please visit our website, because our website is really got full detailed information uh, about our technology, who are, you know, our customers are, some of our clients that uh, that we're engaging with. So you can, you can reach us on ecm-technologies.net. And, uh, and, and again, my information is on there. Uh, we're very uh, uh, accessible, uh, our chief technology officer, our head engineer. So anybody that wants to engage, wants to learn more, ask questions, we love answering them. So if you think your HV units are, uh, are running a little rough or you just wanted to talk about what the heck is Thermoclear and how is it going to help me? Uh, and Or if you're a multi-unit uh, you know, unit operator and you got, you know, a hundred different units scattered around the country, here's your opportunity to take your fleet, give it a little oomph or a little smoothness. And uh, and then you can look at your spreadsheets and then down the road, you're like, oh, holy smokes, the ROI actually worked, you know? So you, you listen, I, I learn something new every day. So Give this gentleman a call. He's an expert and uh, he'll show you what they can do. Um, if uh, if there was one positive thought or phrase that you'd want to leave with our listeners, what would it be as we go into Q3 and Q4 and uh, the second half of 2023? I know, oh, you know, that, look, I've got so many, uh, so many quotes and or sayings that I, that I like, but I think the 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 one that has resonated with me through my entire life is don't ever confuse efforts with results. Yeah. You know, I, I tell that to everybody. And um, I've also found too that, you know, the harder I work, the luckier I get. So uh, persevere, uh, never give up, and um, always look at no as an opportunity. And it, that has really worked for me. You know, it's funny. I, I, I mean, it was last week where I had someone we were talking about getting no's. I'm like, look, I'm a, I'm a salesperson. I have to get as many no's as possible because the more no's I get, the more yeses I'm going to get down the road. They, they happen in jumble something, you know, but it's a numbers game. And the first no that you get is not no. It's just no that he's that that's not going to happen in that different way. So, uh right. I, I, you know, you know, I, uh, but I'm totally with you there as far as, you know, Hey, you, you never got to, you, you know, never give up, never quit. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, so forth, you know, myself, I'm ABM always be moving. I don't care what it is. Always be moving because life's short. Doesn't matter what you go. You might go in the right direction. You might go in the wrong direction. You might take the, take the right, you know, always be moving and moving forward, not backwards forward. So, uh, I totally it's, like it's really it. Hey, if anybody wants to get me, you can get me at David C at CCR-mag.com. Love to hear from you. I know you don't like me saying this, but it's like, if you don't buy a lottery ticket, you can't win the big, big prize. So if you don't send me something, uh, just like 
you know, Dave's publicist reached out to me. That's how he got on here. So if you want to be on the on the show, or if you've got a new product, you've got an anniversary charity golf tournament, you got someone retiring, whatever it might be, send that to me. We love getting content. Send it to me. Uh, you know, I always come back. I might be a couple of days, but I look at everything. I send you a note. Uh, very tough to get in the magazine, but we have plenty of social media and we post stuff all over the place all day long. And it's win-win. We send you the link. You share. It's good for SEO, search engine optimization. And, uh, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, and let us be the judge. Let's, you know, don't even think about it. Just, just send it to me and, uh, and we'll get it posted for you. So, well, Mr. Fent, pleasure you, meeting you uh Hi, you know I, listen when i get out there uh we'll go to earl's or uh you know somewhere up there in cave creek and uh we'll have uh you know we'll have lunch and uh i got a couple of really good clients that are out there too they always like good uh good food and uh um you know stay cool out there you know in the rest of the summer you know just started basically so uh uh you know i always tell people look i'd rather be in 116 in dry heat than in you know 95 degrees with 98 percent humidity in atlanta you know it's just uh it you know it, it, hot hot i i'll take the dry heat versus uh the uh you know the humidity heat if you know what i mean so absolutely any last thoughts before you sign off from the valley of the sun no i appreciate you having me on um you know i hope uh you know you're your listeners, your viewers, uh, enjoy this. And yeah, listen, when you come out here, make sure you get in touch with me because we will definitely go out and we will get a good meal. Okay. You got, you got, you got a deal and you got a deal, uh, you know, up on the lake, man, we'll go for a cruise and, uh, uh, and I'll keep you abreast of our, uh, you know, construction process that goes on. So, um, uh, Great. everybody out there, look, you got the holiday coming up uh enjoy time with family and friends you know look if you're out there on the construction site make sure you come home safe the most important thing it's getting hot drink lots of water and uh you know enjoy yourself you know it's kind of crazy because uh you know uh fourth of july is on a tuesday so kind of it's not like on a friday or a monday so it's kind of in the middle of the week so some people are taking off this whole week and next week or this week you know i ah, who knows so but uh it you know it, it just enjoy yourself relax, recharge your battery. We're halfway through the year. The summer just started and, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, enjoy the holiday and, you know, remember what it's all about too. And, um, and then rock and roll for the next 180 days. And before you know it, boom, we're going to be ringing in 2024 and saying goodbye to 2023. It's going to be here before you know, and I'm just shocked that it's already July 26th. And, uh, uh, you know, time flies when you're having fun. That's all I got to say. So, Dave, pleasure meeting you. And I look forward to seeing you. And, you know, no fist pumps. I'm, I'm, we're going to shake your hand, uh, whether it's here in Atlanta or, you know, out, out there in Phoenix. And uh, uh, so sign off from Phoenix. Say goodbye to our listeners out there. Hey, see everybody later. Everybody have a wonderful holiday. Yeah. And I'm going to sign off here from uh, Sugar Hill, just below the Beaufort Dam on Lake Lanier, which is about uh, 25 miles, 30 miles uh, north of downtown ATL, the LA of the South. And one last thing. Hit that like button. We want to make sure that people find us here on the Aguilers on YouTube. So see that little like button? Push it, push it. We want it, you know. We want it, we want to talk about ECM technologies, what they have, and flood the flood the uh the web with it. So with that said, I'm gonna sign off. Dave signing off from out west and happy fourth of July. And we will catch you next time on another episode of Commercial Construction Coffee Talk. Thanks, Dave. You're the man. I, I appreciate it. You got it. All right, man. See ya. <laughs>